Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks, and uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to kind of take a break away from the creating comic books and drawing and all that stuff to work on some Halloween props because Halloween is fast approaching. So, uh, yeah, I usually am a big Halloween enthusiast. I usually get into it big time. Um, not as much this year, but I am helping out a friend with the display, and we've kind of done this a few years in the past and we're kind of uh, just building on this pirate uh, haunted pirate theme that we we kind of started last year so we're adding more props and things to that um, so with this haunted Halloween or this haunted pirate theme we are uh, well my friend found a really cool um, like Davy Jones mask from Pirates of the Caribbean so we're gonna try to build a Davy Jones prop um, but uh, the mask the mask is cool. My friends work it on like tentacles and things like that for one of the arms. The other arm he has is a claw. So I am going to build a claw out of foam. Um, and I don't know if you if you go way back to the beginning of my channel, you may have seen me working with some foam props and things for my my um, comic booth uh, display. So anyway, uh, I guess the easiest way to kind of uh, Show you what I've been working on here. So uh, this is two blocks of uh, EPS foam glued together and and it's just an insulation foam. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Um, a lot of times it'll have this uh, this plastic film off on it. You got to pull that off which is usually a hassle. It doesn't does not come off easy most of the time. So if you can find it without that, or even if you can find, like, uh, let's see, some of this uh, blue or pink foam, this stuff works a lot better. Um, but I just happen to have these pieces lying around. They're actually part to a um, tombstone that I didn't end up using. So um, this is just junk pieces, and that's, that's kind of the key to everything we're doing with this display is trying to get things cheap. And um, and just find the, the cheapest way to build some really cool props, whether that's buying, you know, leftover Halloween props from garage sales or online or, or whatever, or Craigslist or all that kind of stuff. Um, and then building things um, and just make it as cool as we can without spending a whole lot of money because it's not, you know, this is just for fun. So, so anyway, so I had these scrap pieces left over. I glued them together. And what I used to glue this uh, polystyrene together is this stuff called uh, Glidden Gripper. And it's really just a, uh, it's like a primer sealer, but for whatever reason, it, it will bond these pieces of foam together really well. And one thing I found out, I was using this before, and I may have not put the lid on tight enough, because just a little bit, if it just a little bit of air gets in this, this thing will dry up so that pretty much I wasted a lot of it, because the top, you know, half of it is just like rubber now, so I was able to pull that rubber off, and I still had a little bit in there, but I got to be careful about that in the future. So as you can see, now let me show you, let me see, I got it on this iPad here. Um, this is kind of what I'm going to be building more or less, you know. Um, and this is the claw from the Davy Jones character from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So, and it's not going to function or anything. It's not actually, it's going to be on a mannequin, so it's not going to be a person in a costume or anything. That would be a little more difficult because it'd have to be hollowed out and all that. But uh, yeah, so let me show you how I do this. So after I glue these pieces together, I've got this thing, and it's not plugged in. I should have plugged it. <laughs> Let me go ahead and plug this in. Uh, and that is going to turn my lights off. Let's see. I'm going to pause this for a second. And we're back. So let's see. So yeah, I was showing you this tool I have. This is my hot knife. It is a, a knife. Basically, it heats up, and then it will just carve through that foam, pretty much like butter. Now, um, these you can get at uh, a website called Hot Wire Foam Factory. You can see that. And uh, this is a really cool tool, and uh, I shelled out a, a few dollars to get this. It's not cheap. It's a little pricey, but it works very well. So uh, it was a good investment for me. But if you're not, if you're, if you're not 
if you don't have the money or you just this is you know you don't want to invest that much because like I said before we're trying to do this as inexpensively as possible um, there are some other alternatives this thing is uh, I don't know this one is called a wonder cutter now this is old it's just there's 2d batteries in here and it heats up it's really it's really basic um, but there's a wire in between and this this works good for cutting certain things but because it's bowed like this you can only get so far into the foam so it has its limitations but and uh, I don't know how much these go for maybe like 20 17 20 bucks whatever um, this this is a little better alternative and I think it's I think this is actually about the same price um, this is called a styro cutter plus by flora craft you can probably look that up online but this can do you know this this can do a lot I mean it's it's you have to take your time with it because it's you know it's just a little tiny wire and everything but but you can you know cut away shapes and things like that it's not as great with carving um, this in addition to this uh, right now I've just got this kind of a knife blade on it but it's also got a wire blade and I'll show you in the future on, when I get further along on this how I use that but uh, it's got this wire blade that you can kind of bend and make whatever you want so you can almost shape it almost like a, you know like a, a circular shape and just scoop foam out like like an ice cream scoop basically um, so let me let me kind of show you again this is uh, this is the basic shape now I'm gonna kind of carve some of this down now usually because of some of the fumes and stuff that come from this foam you want to wear like a protective mask I am going to risk my health and safety at least for a few minutes so I can continue to talk <laughs> because you might not be able to hear me with that so so here we go it just uh, when the red light I don't think you can see that here's a little see that yeah there's a little red light there when that is on you want to give it a little time to warm up and uh, I'm just gonna shave away some of this excess um, foam here I don't know if you can see that And you don't want to go too fast. It, you know, it, it does take a little time. You don't want to go too fast. Now I can heat it up, and I can cut a little faster, which I may do. Um, let me just cut a piece off here first. Yeah, I mean, before I got this tool, I mean, it was <laughs> it was hard times. So I can heat it up a little more. I don't know if you can see this. See all these little. There's little pits and things like that. That's from my head. when I first cut started cutting this out. Um, it was on high, so it's, it was super hot. So it started eating away at little parts of the foam like that, which typically you don't need. But you know what? This this claw is supposed to look kind of rugged anyway. And plus, we've got a lot more carving to do. So I'm going to try to. Uh, there's a little dial on the top here where I can heat it up. So I'm going to heat. I don't want to bring it all the way to the top because this thing. This thing gets red hot, so let's let's go a little higher. See how how well it cuts. If it cuts any better, you have a chance to heat up again. Yeah, you see, see that's a lot faster. And that looks pretty good. I didn't get any much of that other stuff, so I'm going to cut around this other sheet. Now, when I glue these two pieces of foam together, I didn't I didn't cut the whole. I didn't coat the whole piece here. Um, I guess I should explain that a little better. Um, well, basically, when I I just put like the glue, which is that glidden gripper stuff that I showed you earlier, just in the middle here, because it with that stuff doesn't cut through as well as the foam, so it helps. You know, it helps. Uh, it helps if you don't cut if you don't put the glue anywhere where you're going to actually cut. Does that make sense? Hopefully, <laughs> anyway. Um, so this is going to be more of the same for a little bit. Let me turn it up just a little more. I'm getting a little brave here. But yeah, this thing, like I said, it's pretty much, pretty much cuts like butter, especially at this high speed. And if I notice that the blade starts getting super red hot, I might want to, you know, yeah, it's starting to do that now. I don't know if you can see that. So you got to just kind of watch that. So now we've got both of these. Well, there's a little tip here. Let's cut that off here. All right. So I've got the basic shape here. I'm going to carve the inside out. Now, yeah, it should be thick enough. I've got a thicker blade too for that. Um, but 
that's it for now and I'm gonna come back when I'm a little further along and I'll just kind of show you each step along the way maybe I'll show you some of the other blades that come with the hot knife and everything and uh, so we'll see you in a bit okay so we're back and uh, I did a little more work on the claw as you can see yeah a little further along still very rough but uh, you know you can kind of see and I did all that with that that blade that I showed you before but what I've done now is I've changed that blade out with a little different blade and this is just a wire that then you know comes with the whole kit and everything but you can kind of bend it and shape it and do whatever you want but I've kind of made just a little thin type wire that I can use to kind of make some cracks and things like that because where the other knife works real good for cutting out straight lines it doesn't work real good as far as routing things out so so I've changed that blade and let me kind of show you what I'm going to try to do here again here's that picture you can see so right in here where you can kind of see where the claw separates ah well <laughs> anyway where the two pieces of the claw separate so right here where I've indicated I'm gonna kind of carve that part out so let's let's go ahead and do that okay so I'm gonna wait till it turns on here and it's a little hard to do this and show you guys at the same time but Kind of see. And I'm just basically cutting a little trench, I guess, <laughs> over here from one side to the other. Just pull that piece out. So you can see where I've done in here, and you know I can go a little deeper, and I can sand some of this or cut other pieces out here. There's also where the claw and the arm meet is another separation here so I'm going to go ahead and shape cut that area out do the other side here There you go. Now there's other tools you can use to carve and everything, and I don't have them right here with me, but uh, some of them are like wood shaving t tools or, or, you know, that actually shave away. It's got, it's almost like a big cheese grater type thing. Um, this foam makes a lot of mess, so I try to get as much done with just these hot wire tools as possible because it doesn't get all the little beads and little shavings all over the place until I get down to the very last, you know, doing the detailed work and everything. So as you can see, we kind of cut through there, give it a little more dimension. And I'm going to work a little more on this off camera, and then I'll come back again, and uh, we'll see how far along I am, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, we're on to the next stage of this project, which is kind of doing some sanding. And as you can see, so this is pretty much, it's similar to what you saw earlier, a few seconds ago for you guys. Um, but on the other side, I've been carving away, kind of sanding stuff down to make it a little bit smoother. Because um, the claw is kind of, it's pretty smooth, it's going to be shiny and everything like that. Um, where, you know, something like this you could actually use, I mean, this look might be good for like, say if you're carving like the thing from Fantastic Four or something like that, something that's real rocky or if you're making a prop that's like a like a mountainscape or something like that but uh, for this we want a little bit smoother so we're going to continue to keep sanding on this and what I'm using is uh, this thing and it's just a little wood shaving tool you can get this at a um, hardware store or whatever and let me tilt this see if I can tilt this camera down and we'll do the other side just kind of see a little bit how that works it's pretty easy I mean once you see it you'll should get the kind of the hang of it. Let me hold on there. How's that? I don't know if you can see it, if the light and everything works. But, uh, yeah, you just, you just gonna kind of shave away at this, get all the rough, rough patches out. Just so it matches the other side. And then 
after that we'll take a we'll get like some sanding blocks and do some more fine sanding on it. Not sure if you guys are able to see what's going on on the camera there, but you know it doesn't take too long. This stuff carves pretty well, but as you can see, all, all the white snow that's flying around, it is messy. And the good thing about this is uh, you want to get one that kind of has a curve to it, if you can kind of see that. That's really helpful. I've got some that are like totally straight. But they don't work as good as the curves. And again, where we carve that, that little trench area here where the the two pieces of the claw separate from the arm and the hand of the claw. We're going to smooth that out a little bit. So again, I'm, I'm going to shut the camera off and hold on, let me tilt this back up a bit. All right. Okay, so as you can see this part, it's getting a little bit smoother. I'm going to finish this up, but I don't want to, you know, waste everyone's time with every little step once you've kind of seen how it's done. So I'm going to finish this up and we'll be back again. We're on to the next stage here. So you can see I've done a little more work just kind of carving with these tools here. Um, I had kind of a, some scallop shapes in here where the claw is added some bumps and everything. It was way, kind of way too smooth, so I wanted um, some bumps, and I'll probably add some little barnacles. I might do that out of clay or something later. Um, but, uh, and as you can see, this side is a lot smoother. Here's kind of the rough side, but now I'm starting to get using these, uh, there's just little foam sanding blocks. Um, you can use those. Also these here, they're little sheets of foam, sandpaper type deals. Um, <laughs> I don't know the names, the actual names for any of these. Um, but you can see now it's a little bit smoother now that I've kind of sanded it down with that. Um, but I, I left the other side kind of rough. So I'm going to go ahead and sand that down. And I'll show you a little bit of that. About uh, I'll show you a little bit of that, although it's kind of self-explanatory. Once you see a little bit, you'll kind of understand. You just kind of keep at it, keep working at it. So let's see if I can tilt this camera back down once more. Can you see that? It's kind of an odd angle. Um, if I was really fancy, I'd do some cool edits and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do that. So, um, so yeah, just you take your foam sanding blocks. And you just basically do what you were doing before. You kind of be, have to be a little careful around the, the little bumps and stuff that I've created so we don't sand those off. Let's get it nice and smooth. And it doesn't take too long to do. see hopefully you can kind of see the difference there it's a lot smoother there now for when we get inside these little scalloped areas it helps to use this tool because the block is kind of it's got edges and everything and angles so it's a little hard to do that so what you can do is you can kind of just twist this or you can kind of wrap it around your finger a little bit and then let's see it's got a weird I'm trying to show I don't know how the best to show this to you just kind of go in there Sand those areas. And you can use, you know, almost anything to sand. Like if you got other areas, you can, I mean, if it's real small, you can wrap it around a pencil or something like that, or just wrap regular sandpaper around a, a pencil and get in there. Um, for certain things, you can use like the emery boards that you use to file your nails or whatever. All that kind of stuff works. There. Nice and 
smooth. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. So I'm gonna cut the video once more and we'll come back with the next step. Hey look, I changed my clothes. It is actually a day later and I just thought I'd get back on here and kind of show you how I have progressed on the claw. So I've sanded it down, it's kind of, you know, added some little bumps and things like that. Uh, and the next step, what I'm doing is I already started is I'm going to add some little barnacles. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just using uh, like air hardening clay. So it's, uh, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to tilt the camera down once more, see how this works. Can you see that? I'm not sure I really like these angles, but for right now, I'm just kind of not putting much time into these particular videos. I just want to I wasn't even sure I wanted to show you guys how I did this. Not that I didn't want to show anyone, but um, I was just going to work on it. And then I said, you know what, I'll turn the camera on. So, so I'm just taking a little bit of this, you know, clay. This is, and this is the stuff that will harden once you, you know, as it, you know, with the air and everything. So putting couple little pieces here and maybe yeah, it's got to get, get these things a little wet uh, man my allergies are like killing me it's it's early in the morning when I'm recording this and that's seems to be when they're the worst so excuse my sniffling all right and well, I've just got a little wire thing that I'm going to use Make a little hole in here and just kind of pull some pieces down. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't know. Can you guys even see that? Yeah, I used to have a better tool than this that had a point to it, but I don't know where that went. So. I don't know how long these, this takes to dry. I should have figured that out before I get to the next step which will be hard coating it and do another one here it's kinda you kinda go on the internet and look at barnacles and how they look so there's a few so it looks messy yeah I know but once we coat it and paint it and everything it should look pretty good and the good thing about once you get little little crevices and things like that, when you add the paint, it'll help pop that stuff out a little more, you'll see. So uh, that's, that's it for this stage. We'll be back for the next one. All right. So you can see I've added some little barnacles and also some little bumps and things here just to give it a little more texture. So this thing, although it looks kind of, doesn't look that... You know, <laughs> doesn't look like much, but uh, we're going to go to the next stage, which is hard coating this. And that'll, you know, everything will be this, you know, it'll smooth everything out and uh, give it a little bit of a hard texture. And um, so it's not just foam and it won't chip away and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so if you, if you happen to watch the videos I did way back when... Uh, when I was doing my booth design, I used this kind of stuff as a hard coating. It's called Styra Spray, um, and it kind of hardens like a, uh, almost like a fiberglass, uh, really smooth, and that stuff works great. It would probably work pretty good on this. Um, it's a little pricey, and I'm running low on that, so I'm going to use a different kind of hard coating this time. And the good thing about this one is it's something that you guys, anyone can pretty much make at home, you know, just with stuff you get at the hardware store. It's pretty simple to make. Um, it's called Monster Mud. I don't know if you've heard of that, but that's usually what people call it. And it's, is, you get some of this, uh, it's a drywall compound, joint compound, and just some regular, uh, latex paint. Um, probably flat. I, you know, usually, I always paint this stuff, so it doesn't really matter. The color usually doesn't matter. I try to, 
I go and I buy, this has got an X on it, this is stuff that they mixed wrong or whatever, and you can usually get those pretty cheap. So um, the formula is four parts of this and one part of this. So four parts drywall compound, joint compound, one part uh, latex paint. So, and I've already mixed some up, and you want to get a, hold on, you want to get a good drill with uh, something, this probably isn't even the, the optimum way to do it as far as this, I mean, you can see how old this is, but just something that you can mix this stuff in real good that you can attach to a drill or whatever. Um, depending on how much you use, you can get like big gallon, gallon jugs or whatever you want, uh, or five gallon jugs. You want something with a lid on it, because this stuff will keep pretty long, but uh, you, need, you need to have a, a lid to it. So I just, I just save these old ice cream uh, containers from parties and stuff and uh, it's got a lid to it so I've mixed it up and it kind of looks like that so I'm going to apply some of this to the claw so and I'm just going to use a brush it will have some brush strokes in it um, if you use like a foam brush that might help a little bit it might not get as get as many of those brush strokes but I'm not too concerned with it at this point I mean this is this is kind of a quick and dirty prop so so you just kind of brush it on like you would paint and depending on you know how many coats you put on it, that's going to be how durable the coating is. Um, so yeah, it kind of brushes on like paint. Now this stuff will self-level to a certain extent. It's not not the same as the other uh, coating that I use that I always use for like real smooth type things. But this one, I want it to kind of have be a little. Obviously, we've got all these little barnacles and things like that, so it's not going to be, we don't want it completely smooth. Um, but so I, and that's basically it. You just keep doing this, just brushing this stuff on here. And by the way, you know, I know I'm kind of rushing through all this stuff, so if, there, if you guys have any questions or anything, anything that I you didn't quite understand, just, you know, hit me up on the YouTube comment section, and I'll get back to you and try to answer a question if I can. So I'm going to continue to do this and we'll be back and I guess the next stage will probably be painting. So I'll see you then. All right. Now the whole piece has been totally coated, hard coated, as you can see. Now the next stage is actually going, I'm going to apply some paint. So let me kind of tilt this camera down. See if we can do that. There we go. So I have uh, just this cheap. This is Apple Barrel brand. You can get ceram coat or whatever, whatever kind of acrylic paint. This stuff's fairly inexpensive, and it it actually it lasts pretty long, and it's got pretty good coverage. Um, it's weird though that the orange, which is one of the colors I'm going to be using for this, it orange itself. Certain colors have better coverage than others. Um, orange and yellow, not so much, but I'm going to mix some of this orange with red because this is going to kind of be an orangish, reddish uh, color as a base coat. So I'm just going to put some of this stuff on a paper. Ah, I can see that. There you go. On a paper plate. I'm going to mix in some red. And I'm not going to be too technical about it because this is when this gets finished, it's going to, you know, it's going to have all kinds of different tones and, and shading and, and stuff like this. So, so I'm going to mix these two together. But I'm not even going to really worry too much if it's totally mixed really well, even if it's got some of these little, you can see the little swirls of color in there, which you probably can on camera. But uh, I'm not even going to really worry about that so much. I'm just going to give it a nice coat. Then I'm going to let it dry and then I'll come back in and I will do some, uh, do a little more, you know, touch ups and, and do some shading and stuff like that. Some faux painting. But yeah, just give it a good paint, a uh, good coat. I'll probably give it a second coat too after this first one dries. I can still see some of the, uh, the gray kind of showing through. Like I said, this orange, for whatever reason, it just uh, the orange, and it's it's like that with almost most brands that I've used of this type of kind of craft paint. Um, 
Sometimes you can get thicker paint. I think uh, Folk Art makes one that's a little thicker. Sometimes that works good too, but you know, you just have to probably apply a few more coats to this. So I will be back after uh, this whole thing is coated and we'll kind of come back in and we'll add some some shading and little highlights and stuff like that. Alrighty, our next step after we have painted the first coat, you can kind of tell, check that out, just a basic solid coat of orange paint. And uh, I'm going to refer back to my uh, little picture that I'm kind of going off of, if you can see that. So it's got some black. It looks like a lot of black, and then up in here you can see a little bit of yellow. There's not much here on the hand that you're actually going to see that I'm doing, but I might put some yellow in there just to just to pop some of that stuff out there. Um, but I'm going to start off with uh, a coat of a little darker red, and um, I'm going to add some of this. This is old, so hopefully it's still good. This is just a color glaze, and what this does is if you add it, this is kind of like a faux finish. Um, you can also, if you're, if you do airbrushing, you can do air, airbrush works great for this kind of stuff. Um, I have an airbrush. I haven't used it in a while, and I actually sold my compressor to my uh, my neighbor because he wanted to start some kind of airbrush business or something. Um, but anyway, so but airbrush works great for stuff like that because you can get a nice fade with the colors and everything. But you can also accomplish that with just uh, some faux painting techniques and. What the glaze does, it just makes the, the paint a little more translucent, um, so it blends in a little better. And sometimes this stuff is kind of expensive, but what you can do is the when you when you buy paints in gallons or quarts or whatever, um, when they mix for dark paint, it's usually like a translucent color that they a base that they add. Um, that stuff works good too. So if you just get a paint that hasn't been tinted, um, the not, there's some that are kind of more opaque, but get the translucent stuff, um, and that works great too, and you get a lot more mileage out of that. But this just happens to be what I have. So I'm going to add a little bit here in this tray next to some uh, darker reddish kind of maroon color, and uh, I'm going to mix that together. And then I'm going to just pull the camera back down so you can kind of see. Whoa, that ain't going to work. I may have to stop this for a second. <laughs> Okay, I kind of fixed that. And again, I apologize for the angle and the fact that this video is so haphazardly cut together. But, you know, I think I think the point will come across and you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. So, um, anyway, maybe in the future I'll, I'll try to, you know, I just, like I said before, I just kind of started doing this without any kind of plan or anything. So, um, I'm just going to get some of this little, oops, translucent. Uh, maroonish glaze stuff here and uh, I'm going to start on the seems like the tips were now they're they're black but I'm going to kind of blend in I'm going to put some black in here too um, but this will kind of be a good um, transition from the black to oh you can't even see that sorry to the um, the orange hopefully if all goes smoothly the good thing about this is you really can't mess up because the worst that can happen if you don't like it, you can just paint over it again and start all over from scratch. So I don't worry too much about it. Like I said, this I really don't have too much of a game plan right here. I'm just kind of. There's a couple. This is a little more wet. You know, you can also do more of a dry brush technique where you just kind of keep, you know, you don't put too much of the, the paint on each. Uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to fade it in like that. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm kind of rambling on. It's hard for me. It's easy for me to show, just do things, but it's hard for me to explain how I do it. Now, the other thing I want to do is any place where there's, there's like a crevice or anything like that, or an indentation, I want to fill that with a, a darker color. That'll help pop it out, um, as you can see here. So, let's go in here and do that. Again, right in here. I'm gonna click over here to my iPad so I can take a look at that picture again, just to see what's going on here. Okay. 
little bit under. I'm just going to kind of pop some in here where, where these little either barnacles or little whatever you want to call them, um, little bumps and things where they kind of cast a shadow. I can now where this I'm kind of just loading it up where this barnacle is, and then I'm going to wash that out or rub that off. And I don't know if I have any paper here. <laughs> any, uh, I just did. let me see. There's a, yeah. There's a little rag. And that should kind of get it so the. It's a, that's another kind of technique is this ragging technique, but that'll get some of the you know darkness in the little creases there. I'll do it again on this one. This other barnacle here. And a little bit under here. Also, let's see. Kind of hard to. I got a smaller brush here. Let me try that. Just in here where the kind of scallops on the hands are. that I had previously kind of mix these in together a little more since it's still wet it'll, it should blend in pretty well and again if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing it's Probably because I don't exactly, <laughs> but it'll come. I know it'll come out decent when I'm done because I've done this enough times. It's just kind of playing around with all these different colors and shading. And once I pop that black in uh, into here, I definitely want to get some more of that red in here. See now all the colors are kind of going together with that and that set that glaze that really helps because it, it keeps it wet and it keeps it keeps everything kind of blending in kind of like when you work with oils this is an oil but the the trick to the way you can get all those nice blends with oil paints is because they stay wet so this kind of helps with that look okay so so yeah I'm gonna keep Keep doing this keep working on this and uh, eventually I'll start adding some blacks in here and uh, so the next step you'll see it uh, might might be close to done um, now I'm using flat paints which I would recommend anytime you're doing something like this even if you want it to be glossy work with flat paint paints and then uh, then you want to come back in and put like a gloss coat over it which I probably will do with this although I don't know if I have any with me right now so I might have to go get some but uh, Probably can't tell on the camera anyway. So when I come back, it, it may be finished. So let's see, let's see what happens. I'm gonna do a little more work on this. And the paint is now dry. And uh, so let me show you what I came up with. And again, um, I may go ahead and put like a, uh, like a, 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 like a gloss or semi-gloss, uh, like a clear coat on this to kind of make it shiny. But that is it. So. You can see, yeah, I've just kind of just played around with some different colors, added some yellows and some blacks and things like that. Now, it's not perfect. I mean, if this was something that was up close as far as like as a like a movie prop or something like that, um, I might take a little more time with it. This is just a quick Halloween prop, and I think it's going to do fine for that. So, uh, so there you go. I'll see you guys later. That is all. Oh, 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 oh,